morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my week three reviews of the CFL season. So please make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out our Spider-Man Far From Home trailer reaction. Um, holy crap, cannot wait to see that. Oh my. Anyways, I'm so excited about that, but let's get into this one. So we're gonna get into the first game, Edmonton versus BC. Not a game I expected to go the way that it did. I really thought that Edmonton was on kind of this down streak. And it's funny because last week before last week's games, I predicted that Edmonton, that Harris was going to get going and that they, that really that squad of Edmonton talent was going to start getting going with him. Um, and I thought that because of last week that, you know, it would be just another week of it just not really moving. However, um, Harris was decent. Uh, it was much, much better than last game. And um, this will be interesting, especially with BC, as uh, you may or may not have known. They have a new owner. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But they now have their first loss. Uh, the first game is new owner. Obviously, no correlation between the two. Just worth mentioning. Um, Burnham and Whitehead, still deadly. They have been able to do some magnificent, magnificent things in BC. And man, it makes me sure miss Lucky Whitehead. Uh, BC, though, had a strong start. Uh, with a field goal and an interception early on, uh, but they didn't quite carry it. However, it was a very competitive game, and I think this is a game that BC definitely could have still gotten, um, and it was, uh, it was a good game to watch. So without further ado, we'll then go into our next game, Calgary versus Montreal. Bo Levi Mitchell didn't start, and Calgary won! Wow, because it's funny because they had one of their worst starts to a season that they've had, I think, the past 20 years with going 0-2. And, and I really, I thought for some reason they'd go 0-3. But you know what? They had Mayer go in and he did well. He did well. And, um, you know, I, I, I think they stick with him until maybe try putting Lee, uh, Bo Levi Mitchell in uh, if, he's, if Mayer starts to fall apart. But obviously just keep rolling with it if it works. Uh, Montreal did start hot, though. I really thought Montreal was going to do more than they did, just based off their, their very strong performance in Week 2 with their first game coming back. Although you can see kind of the start of that game that they kind of continue with that, but it does eventually die down a bit throughout the course of the game. Uh, it was a really close game, honestly. Like, there, it was a lot of back and forth, and a lot of really close plays where, you know, balls could have been intercepted, or and they just barely caught it, or balls were just intercepted that... They almost got it, and they almost would have got that huge amount of yardage. And I, uh, I found that Mayer and Adams were were quite um, quite similarly matched. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see because QBs this season, there's really only been at, at this point, at least in the season, there's really only one QB that really sticks out to me as probably the best QB right now in the CFL. And I'll get onto that later. Um, but yeah, Calgary would win this game 28 to 22. So they're not 0 and 3. Thank goodness. They thank goodness for, for their sake, because that just, you know, not, not good to go 0 and 3, especially when you have big expectations. And without further ado, that'll bring us into our next game, Winnipeg versus Toronto. You all know my opinion on this game. Winnipeg was disappointing. I love my bombers. But they did, this was not the same Blue Bomber team. We, we, we came out flat. There, it's, I found that the Bombers overall throughout the course of this game were not very good. However, they did have spurts of greatness with, you know, the defense not playing the way that they could by, by the, the Winnipeg Blue Bomber defensive standard that they set in these first two games. They didn't, they didn't carry with it. And you know what? And I said this in my game reaction that after week one, everyone thought the Bomber defense was the best in the league. After week two, everyone knew it. And week three got to their heads and they didn't have the best defense in the league this week. And, um, you know, they got a defensive touchdown. They had spurts of greatness, but Toronto was consistent all game. Nick Arbuckle looked great with them. Their offense was pushing nonstop. And um, Winnipeg was just giving up too many holes and too many opportunities. And Toronto would win this game uh, thirty to twenty three. And honestly, as a Bomber fan, we we it could have been it could have been even worse. I honestly I think we got lucky that we got twenty three points out of that game. Uh, Toronto, without a doubt, deserved to win that game. 
And I think uh, if Winnipeg wants to really put the pressure on Calgary, especially with the newfound momentum that they have going into this next game, they're really going to have to get back to uh, where they started this season and uh, drive from that. So without further ado, that'll bring us to our last game, Ottawa versus Saskatchewan. Cody Fajardo is the best QB in the CFL right now. Hates me to say it, and I don't like Saskatchewan, not one bit. I've made that clear. But um, the Saskatchewan offense is terrifying, honestly. And what, what's scary to me is the Bombers... Uh, well, it's scary for me as a Bombers fan when we play them on Labor Day in the Banjo Bowl, obviously, like every year, um, is that Saskatchewan is able to consistently get a good, good drive-in where they get one of two things. Touchdown or a field goal opportunity. And Saskatchewan has been nailing their field goal opportunities and the Bombers have not. And I'm really concerned about our kicker because um, either I think we might have to trade for a better kicker just because, I mean, the Bombers, with you being the defending Grey Cup champions with so much hope and expectation this season, uh, this is a season that you can't be selling players. You've got to be buying players. So I think that um, I think that Saskatchewan is uh, they, they look they look deadly. Um, and Ottawa, this game, they, they're just simply outmatched, you know? Uh, it's not like Ottawa was specifically doing anything wrong. Um, it was just they, they, they don't have the caliber talent that Saskatchewan does. And, you know, Ottawa someday will have that. I think Nichols did pretty did, did good with what he had, which is not much, to be frank, uh, especially with the very low expectations. I'm pretty sure they were predicted to go last of the entire CFL before the season started. And, um, but it was good to see some of the plays that he was able to muster through, like with, you know, him getting a bad snap, he picks it up, dodges a tackle, comes right, uh, runs straight through the front of the pocket and is able to still make a screen, uh, yeah, screen pass, um, under tons of pressure. So it's, it's great to see Nichols having success elsewhere, even though, uh, even though he's not on my bombers anymore, I do like supporting the player. Um, I'm just, I'm so scared about the Saskatchewan throwing game, like, because the Bombers are much better on the run defense than they are on the throwing defense, uh, even though their defense all around is pretty darn good, uh, the Saskatchewan throwing game is l lethal, lethal, and, um, I think that it, it's gonna be such a close game for Labor Day and Banjo Bowl, so, and they have a week off going into that, so, you know, Maybe they'll pull Winnipeg Blue Bombers and injure their players in practice. We'll get on that in our time. Anyways, but Saskatchewan would win this game 23-10. to And, well, that pretty much sums up week three of the CFL action. Uh, please stay tuned as tomorrow I'll be releasing my week four previews. Um, obviously, there's only going to be three games in there instead of four with the uh, Edmonton game. I can't remember who they were playing in. Was it Ottawa? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the Elks game being po uh, postponed due to uh, COVID-19 with uh, Trevor Harris and a few other players testing positive. Um, but stay tuned for that video coming out tomorrow. And uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. I said it at the start of the video, but I'll say it again. And uh, take care, guys. See you next time.